We'd been very busy on the hard stand over the previous three months, and now we were back in the water, there was still an ever-growing list to complete before we could set sail and finish our lap of Australia. This week, we are under the pump, trying to get it all done before our end of summer deadline. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. We are currently giving her a long overdue refit in Tasmania, with plans to set sail soon for the Australian summer. To support our project and to remain notified of all the upcoming releases, thanks for subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell button. Two months ago in our last episode, you saw our splash Marul and make a start on the long list of items we needed to complete before we could set sail for more adventures. Our main priority was getting our boat waterproof, so the next item was installing our galley hatch into its newly raised mount that we built for it on the hard stand. So there's our holes all drilled up. Now I'm just mixing up some um, some epoxy here, some 5 to 1, so it's going to be some hard stuff. To make it harder, we're going to just put some microfiber glue powder in there. We're going to mix it so it's about as thick as, let's say, mayonnaise, and we'll backfill those holes. And then I'm going to drill them, and I'm going to tap them. I'm going to put what's called a helicoil in there. So we'll have a, a blind threaded hole. What that'll mean is I'll be able to use a 6 mil a six mil fastener to hold this down, but we'll also be using the fixed deck, the same as what we used on the windows. So that'll make it, um, the fixed deck will actually hold it very, very strongly. It's what they use to hold the windows in on a lot of these boats with no fasteners. a slight dip here when we put the seal in, that'll make a little annulus there. Many of you have been asking whether we were going to keep the old boom and the answer is no. We've actually got a new boom. Our friend Scott gave it to us very kindly and we, Troy, spent a bit of time cleaning it up and it got a nice new paint job. And now we're just busy, busy getting the rigging, everything ready to put the rigging in through the boom and we're going to run messenger lines through the boom. Um, we've got, I can't remember what these things are called. Sheaves. The what, sorry? Sheaves. Well, we got sheaves here for the lines and the pins have been polished up, ready to go in. And also we have a new system that we're going to run through the room for our outhaul. It's a four to one and Troy's going to explain what that's all about. We're setting up a four to one in our boom. All of this will be inside the boom. We're just showing it to you while it's outside the boom, but it will be inside. The boom's a hollow tube. All right, so none of this runs on the outside. What you'll see come on the outside is this black rope and that goes to the sail and then at the other end of the boom coming out you'll see well maybe not this uh, it doesn't look too bad but i wouldn't mind just getting a brand new rope <laughs> it looks looks a bit nicer so that what well, that's what would normally be in there before you had this color rope coming out one end and this color rope coming out to the sail with a pulley on it four to one no moving parts no moving parts and what it'll mean by having this four to one in the boom we're going to have enough strength through our rope to be able to pull that and it will be able to pull our sail out we won't need winches for our little 30 footer there's not enough not enough force so we'll all be we'll be able to just go to the gooseneck you know by the boom and uh, the gooseneck you know like on the boom near the mast and be able to pull it by hand and make it off on a cleat one more thing that we don't have to lead to a winch that means no jammers, that means less holes in everything. 
one more advantage of a 30 footer. Oh yeah, I'm not doing any effort. <laughs> no, you pull, you pull against it. <laughs> That's a boom end. Um, it was, it, it had been secured by um, some large machine screws. So we've kept those uh, and at the other end, instead of big rivets and a, um, and a, a pin, I've also threaded that. But what I've added is this. So I went and got a, a 5 16th bolt that wasn't being used anymore. Cut the head off and cut the threaded section off. So we've got this smooth 5 16ths, about 8 mil um, rod. And I drilled and countersunk some holes here. I've put it in, I've just filled it up with Fix It. The reason I did that, rather than just leaving it as a pin that could slide back and forward, um, talking to Pete the rigger, he's just advised that. So if you're ever at sea and you want to pull it off, Sure as eggs. <laughs> as soon as you pull that out in the seaway, you'll drop that pin straight overboard. So we'll, we'll just fix it that in. You know, just use a bit of that sealant, and that'll um, that'll hold it in. So when I made the when I made the end of our Dyneema quarter one that we were just looking at, I just made sure I made that loop big enough that the frictionless rings that I'm using can go through it. So to attach it once it's in there, it'll just be larks headed on. That halyard banging in the background is just doing my head in. It's one of the things I just can't get used to about marinas. So that's it. Just larks headed on. And that's like once you've got a loop in Dyneema, that's just totally it. If you're, if you're a boat owner, just try not to leave your halyards loose like that. Not only are you like scarring your mast, just everyone around you just, just draws a conclusion of what sort of mariner you are, you know? Like if it's the conclusion that I draw, you don't want to know about it. It's just the worst thing in the world. The green lines that you can see us putting in here on either side of the outhaul are messenger lines for our reefing lines. Do you need a hammer? No. Nope. What are we going to do with the hammer? <laughs> the sun is out and we've got no rain forecast today. So Troy was out washing the deck this morning. Um, and we're going to put, start putting the anti-skid on. But first things first, I'm just creaming up because the UV is really high here. So sunscreen, hat, and tape. <laughs> Blue tape, nice and stretchy. Yellow tape is really great too. Now yeah, we're set. Yesterday's Kiwi Grip came out so nice. We're really happy with it. It's really textured. It has a lovely finish. So we've just spent the last two hours um, doing the panels on the foredeck um, on either side of the coach top that we did yesterday. And yeah, we just took the time to do it really carefully. The trickiest bit about Kiwi Grip really is just taping out so that you get the panels a really nice shape. So we've got everything taped up. And there's not that, that, not that much to it really. We just used a couple of um, a shot glass. One of its lesser uses is finding nice radiuses to cut in your tape. You're always gonna have some little overlap of tape. Um, so we just fold it back on itself. So when you've got paint covered hands and you're in a bit of a hurry, you've got somewhere to grab because it saves like, especially if you chew your fingernails like me because of the, the anxiety of living with Pascal. 
then um, you know, you've got the you've got that to grab. It makes life a little bit quicker and easier. We've got the Kiwi grip that we are no affiliation. <laughs> it's just what we chose to use. Um, apart from the roller that comes with it to, to raise the texture, and we're going to be using this finer one. Um, apart from that, that's probably the most useful tool. One of these, not just a flat squeegee, and we've used one of those in the past. You know, we have used one that's just like that to, to trowel it around, but one of these, just like putting glue on or whatever, it gives you a really uniform film thickness, because of course the, the little points reference the deck and then just like a plow <laughs> it leaves rows but they're all of exactly the same height so when we come later on to roll it all those rows mostly disappear um, and it's left with the texture it's a very uniform finish that's one of these is the way to put it on like not a brush definitely not a brush um, and we have used this in the past but it's nowhere near as good as one of them so this being a water-based acrylic you can get the white and you can take it into most paint stores and they'll be able to color match as well um, this comes in a, a, a couple of colors that we've seen but if you if you're a, a very fancy yacht owner i'm pretty sure you can get this color matched if, if someone knows what they're doing if you want purple deck grip <laughs> anything we saw the patterns that this thing made you wouldn't actually need to texture roll it if you were using one of these and you you fancied you know like you've got 25 minutes to work not long but you could put some pretty funky geometric designs in if you're a, a warham owner or something like that yeah Let's do it. Until the cornrows disappear and go go long ways once you've once you've got it parallel with the tape. That is a metric six threaded insert for timber with over an inch of embedment. That is a strong thing. Um, I was having a look at um, a study that Purdue University did, and they were talking about drilling these things into, um, I think, red oak. We don't have red oak here, but I understand it's like a pretty reasonable timber. Not as hard as this stuff that we're working with. And it had. Um, it had like a, a pulling strength out of, out of the face, it, you know, like you needed to apply a couple of ton to it to pull these things out. So I think we'll do all right. We can't, um, because of the shape of underneath here, we can't access there to put a big plate in there. So what we'll do is we've got these. So they'll, they'll use up the full length of all the thread of that M6 insert on the inboard side because most of the leverage if you want it would be from this side and then we've got some slightly shorter ones on the other side but not not much shorter oh, look at that they line up <coughs> isn't that a good thing 
So all those machine screws lined up, and the reason being is because we could drill a straight hole. So the way I drill a straight, straight hole is using the shackle that I modified. This was a pretty scabby old shackle. So the threaded end, I drilled it out so it was exactly the same as an M6 drill. And now, as long as the drill is inside that hole, and that's a flat surface, I end up getting four straight holes. And that means my bolt holes line up. That's especially important if you want to get a backing plate on the back. On this we don't, um, but the others have all got backing plates. And if you want to find the holes of your backing plates, you need straight holes. So they're as centered as you can possibly get because that round hole forced that drill to be in the middle. Mm. We used butyl tape for our stancher bases as we wanted a flexible gasket that remained self-healing. Stanchers can come in for side loading, which often makes them a point of sealant failure and deck leaks. So we'll let that settle, hopefully it's another hot day. And we'll let that butyl just fl flow out and look totally messy. <laughs> and then we'll come and do a bit of a clean up just. We've got to clean all of them up really, there's only a couple that are clean. Yeah, well everything, we're at the stage where all of these things, like this here now, all of that, all of that would have cured. So we need to give all of these a half turn. And these th the same, I'll let that butyl settle down because all of these it sort of oozed out a bit and it, I gave it a half turn on everything there as well. So we'll let this just settle, give it another crank. Um, it should be good with that butyl on the rope. We'll never get that out of there. <laughs> it's a real it's a real drag to get butyl tape onto your nylon rope that is a misfortune because that's always going to leave a little black mark no matter what whatever it touches mm. so i'll have to i'll have to wrap it or do something with it with the boom firmly installed on the gooseneck it was time to use the messenger lines to run our reefing lines now behold as it, as it disappears into the sheaves. With our first reef, I might make first reef white because it's nice and light hearted and then mm -hmm. black for the second one. Um, but also the white one is also going to be used for our third reef. Because there's only third, three sheaves, so we've got our outhaul, first and second reef, and it doesn't allow for the third reef that we put in the sail. So what happens is once we put the second reef in, we undo the first reef and run it through the third reef, um, so the eye, and then when we need the third reef, we can use that. Because you don't normally go from first reef <laughs> to third reef. Well, maybe you do in Tassie. But that's how, that's how we're getting around not having enough sheaves. We'll just let the first reef line do double, double duty. With the new boom installed, we decided to strength test the fiberglass repair on our old boom at our mate shed before sending it off as scrap metal. Well, we're spending all right. We see how much, uh, how much pressure she's taken. Yeah. Error. Error. It's wrapped here. It's over 300 kilos. There you go. Error. Over 300 kilos. Yeah, well, that exceeded 300, and I can't, I can't see any, <laughs> any sign that the fiberglass wanted to go. This is bent, like, this has still got a bend in it. So the alley's bent now from yeah, it? Yeah, so we'll, we'll just keep going. The, a boom doesn't, you know, it doesn't have. Um, usually bending forces like this, you know, it's a, it's a compressive thing. So a couple of people were wondering if this was strong enough. <laughs> so, so far it's had enough force to permanently bend the, bend the boom. And this is, it's showing no signs of fracture at all. So we'll just, um, we'll just go until I can't anymore on that chain block. And then that, that'll be half a ton. Oh, no, he's just...
Yeah. <laughs> you broke the broom again. Repair is successful. Not a sign. Not a crack. <laughs> Nothing. Once they fold, you know, once that structure's gone, they, there's hardly any strength in it, they. Yeah, yeah. Is it thin, huh? Huh. Oh. It's all it ever was. There, there's not really much to them, is there? It's just that oval. Chickens know. Strength in eggs. Anyway, that's a that's a better length now for us to carry. We can put that in the metal recycling bin, and they can score some pipe glass. Thanks everyone for watching. It's good to be back bringing you videos again. If you want a, a little bit more of what we're up to in real time and a bit more exclusive information and you'd love to support our project, we've provided more real time content on our Patreon page. So if you're interested, I've put a link in the description of the video and also in the comments section. We'd love to welcome you on board.